Hey guys, I'm back with a new video after whatever, a year plus, but this is a game changer. I, I kind of hate that, that phrase, but it really is. And you can see what I'm talking about right here. This is Pencil Plus, which I've used before. I used it for the second page of Stupid Girl, but until earlier today, after really experimenting and playing with as many things as would come to my mind as possible, I finally was able to get a handle on how to get renders like this. And this was totally art directed. I was able to decide which lines would render and which, which lines would not render. And that's just unbelievable. Now, I'm not able to make lines thinner in the distance. I can change the width of a line from start to finish, but that has nothing to do with distance. So I'll still be playing around with that, not necessarily going to use it, but it would give me more flexibility. So for right now, I want to kind of dig into how I made this happen. Well, how I made this left one happen. This is just... Um, adding some extra detail lines and coloring it so that it is presentable as a kind of before and after on what I get from Maya compared to what you would probably see in a comic. And this little thing down here, these are two separate little uh, images I put together from Creech, which is from 2001 or 1997, depends. Greg Capullo comic book, it's freaking awesome. But I just, I love the way he does this kind of technology. A lot of monitors, just, he's unbelievable. All the metal and tech and just detailed stuff. And, oh man, he's just, he's just the best. So I was kind of using this as a reference for this monitor and you know, it's going to take some time, but yeah, let's dig into it and I'll show you what I was doing and how I'm going to use this to make my artwork just that much better. So we're going to get into Maya. Here's the model. And you can see this is what I've got. And it's pretty dense. It's pretty, it's pretty dense. But that's because as a plug-in, it's just some algorithm. It, it, you know, for for this to be smooth, it needs to have a lot of it needs to have a lot of polygons, and it needs to really because otherwise it's just it's just going to be chunky. It's going to have a lot of squared off edges, and it's going to look terrible on the render. So polygon or um, edge flow and you know quads and all of that, it, it doesn't really matter. I did make quads just so I could smooth it so that it wouldn't look like crap. But yeah, you're not really concerned about the topology of any of this. You just want to get the shapes right. So that's super dense. It doesn't need to be. And of course, if it was for some kind of production or game, it would never work like this. But for a personal thing that I'm just using for, for lines, it's awesome. And then this over here, this was, I just did this cut out with a Boolean, which I never use Booleans, but hey, this is a perfect opportunity to make those part of the workflow. So something that's not on here, and I'm just going to do it for the purposes of showing how this works, is let's go ahead and I'm going to add something to the top. I'm going to add whatever, just a little... A little whatever piece of technology I guess so I'm gonna start with just a cube I'm gonna move it up and and this is not a Maya tutorial at all this isn't really a tutorial at all it's just showing you how I'm using this program and plugin to assist me with 3D and I've got a couple of I've got this really awesome idea for a animation using TV paint. If you know who Paul Johnson is or his name is Ota King, Ota King on YouTube, he did a, a really famous, well I don't know if it's famous, but really popular Star Wars 
animation called TIE Fighter. It's like six minutes long. It, it took him several years to make, but he used 3D for just, I mean, almost all of it. Because, I mean, there are characters in it, but it's really, it's really a lot of TIE Fighters and X-Wings and Star Destroyers and all these all these really cool technology pieces inside the cockpit. And I, I mean, he's, I just, I, I've been watching his live streams lately. He's just, just an, a fun, nice guy, very uh, easygoing. He's talented. I, I love watching him work or at least listening to him work. So here's something. Okay. So I didn't want to do that. So this is something where I'm going to say, okay, what kind of shape do I want? And which parts do I want to be rounded off? And when I round it off, as you saw from the main monitor piece, the bevels are going to be really like high density poly, high dense, high, highly dense curves. So I'm going to have a lot of edges making up these these curves because well that's that's what I'm looking for so I'm going to start with these corner ones see how it goes I'm going to turn this down so that I can have a lot more control and I'm going to put this to eight it definitely seems like overkill but again this is all about just making the render look good so we'll go with that. I think that's going to be fine. Let's come down. Let's bring it down. And we'll just set it right there. I think. Yeah, this is in the origin. We're at the origin. So trying to think of what else I might want to do. I'm going to just do a little, a little quick, simple piece to kind of just make it a little bit more interesting. Let's move it out here. What does that look like? So I'd like to give it a little space right here because that's going to make it look, again, more interesting. And that's all I'm trying to do right now is give it some visual interest. So I think rounding off the corners is just, it's just a good idea. I think, it you know, things being really sharp definitely have their uses, but Again, I'm going to go with an 8. I'm going to do something like this. And then, oh man, I should have done it in a different way. It's okay. So I'm going to use a lattice, which I love the lattice. It's such a fun tool. And let's go to lattice shape and move this down to 2. Just kind of make it a simple square. And I'm going to move this down. So possibly something like that. And then delete the history. Move this up a little bit more. I think that looks pretty good. All right, so we'll see how this goes. I think that looks pretty good. Who knows, I could always round the other part off too, but let's let's use this. So to get it started, here's the Pencil Plus up here. I'm gonna open this line window. And I had this one working from before, so I'm gonna get rid of everything. So this is like a, a empty scene, like as you would see if you were just starting it. So you'd bring up that line window, come over here, I just add one of these, add this, go back to the line four, I'm going to add line set one. Here is where I'm going to add all of my geometry. And if you add a new piece of geometry, after you've got everything set up, you'll need to come back to here, go back to here, and everything that's already there, so like for example, if I, if I just add a cube 
and then I come back to here, you can see only the cube is there because everything else has already been added. So it's not that bad. And it would be good to name everything as this scene because this is just a monitor. This is just for showing and making the video, but this is going to end up being like an entire room with a whole bunch of tech stuff. And this is going to be duplicated, of course, a bunch of times. But it would be nice to have everything organized and named properly, or at least named in a way that makes sense to you, since it's a personal thing. Nobody, you know, nobody cares how it's named. But yeah, so let me delete that. Oops. All right. So I've added everything here. And let's get back to this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, let's see. The only thing I'm really going to change is I'm going to go to brush detail. And instead of simple, I'm going to turn it to normal. And then I don't even know if this does anything, but I turn it to point one and then one. I don't know. I've tried to reverse them. I was thinking that was a way to deal with the uh, distance, having thicker lines in the front and thinner lines farther back, but it, it didn't really seem to do what I expected. So, and here's a preview so you can see it, it doesn't, it's a little bit, it's a little bit fuzzy. Like I guess I wouldn't really want it to be that fuzzy, but it works however, so we'll go with it. Let's see, let's go to the render settings. I'm on Maya software. I do change this here to 4096, whereas by default it's like 540 pixels and it's awful. I don't know if the resolution matters or not. And basically I would just keep rendering it out, changing the sizes until when I bring it into Clip Studio, the line the lines are the the lines look right to me. So I haven't quite figured that out, but it's a really easy thing to do is you just play with these numbers, the image size numbers, and eventually one's gonna look exactly the way you want, and that's the one you're gonna use. And if you have a big scene, by the way, you can always set keyframes so that you can easily go back to the one that you were working on before. But let's still try to figure this out. I didn't mean to be on that one. I meant to be on this one. Let's see if I can get it to get rid of, oh, normal line only. I think that's the one. Yep, there we go. Okay, so that fixed it. So here's the lines. This is what I'm looking at. You can see this looks really nice. The corner is really smooth. And all these corners are smooth because I set it to eight when I beveled it. Now, let's say just for whatever reason, I had some kind of line that I either wanted or lines that I didn't want. And this is something that I found out earlier today, which is kind of the whole point that I was talking about. I've already done a lot of this stuff earlier, so off camera, so I apologize. But let's say, for example, um, so I've got, geez, all right. So for example, let's say I want there to be a line here. So I will select these. Now I use this crease just as a visual guide. If you click on it, middle mouse, drag right, it'll it'll show up really bold. Like all of these are bold. So yeah, let me let me explain that. Anything that's not bold, the creasing doesn't matter, that's just for visual aid, but if you hold shift and right click and then you go to soften, harden, harden, that's gonna, this line is gonna show up in the render. If you do soften, it's not going to show up. So if there are lines showing up in your default render that you don't like, soften them. If there are lines that you want to be there, then harden them. And I did this just, I just drew this in here um, by hand as an example to show. So for example, I will select the ones that I wanted. Oh, goodness gracious. OK. 
Okay, and then let's say we did this, 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 and this. And I will use the crease so I see it, and that's just so I know which ones are hardened and which ones are softened, but we'll harden that one. And then let's see how this render looks. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. And I will bring this up, render it out. Now you can see the one that I hardened, and it doesn't look that good. I mean, this part here, I could probably, you know, smooth it out, add a couple of more edges. I have to do it by hand, and this, this one showed up as well. So, yeah, it's, it's total control over what you want to show up and what you don't. So there's like a little thing here, which is, again, not a huge deal, but let's find it just so I can show you. And then, so yeah. For some reason over here, these got, oops, these got creased and hardened. So I'm gonna turn the crease off by dragging left. And then most importantly, I will soften the edge. And then I didn't set a keyframe, so none of these renders are gonna be the same, which is my fault. I definitely should have done that. And I'm not in the right view or the white, the right, uh, I'm in the standard. If you go to the classic one, I'm not like an expert with all this stuff, but if you go to the classic version, then you'll see down here, you'll see the timeline. And I could say, do, if I select the perspective camera here, which is what's showing me right down here at the bottom, and I basically click S, you see this little red mark, that is a keyframe. And then if I move it around, just snaps right back to where I want it. So it's super useful. So all I'm gonna do is get rid of this because it's bothering me, it doesn't look good. And then I'm gonna re-render it one more time. And that's pretty much it. All I would say after that is you're going to want to save it as a PNG and it'll come right into Photoshop or in my case, Clip Studio Paint as a, as a uh, transparent background. So all you would need to do at that point is add a white solid, a solid white fill layer under it. And there you go, you got your lines on one layer, just like, um, you know, just like you would like. And so let me go ahead and soften this. And then, yeah, I don't know how to get the timeline on the standard version. That's kind of probably really elementary. But click on the perspective. Let's snap it back to what I was looking for before. I'm gonna have to figure that out, by the way. And then I will, let's see, close that one down. Goodness gracious. You guys probably think I don't know how to use Maya. It doesn't matter though. So there we go. Everything is, oh man, there's a, look at that. This almost exactly, that's a tangent, I believe it's called. That is terrible. I, I had to be careful about this one, this interior cut with this back line, but this one is really bad. Oh my gosh. So let's move it out of the way a little bit and I'll just render it like this. Wow, yeah, that, that would be terrible. So, but there we go. So that is Pencil Plus 4 with Maya for turning 3D models into really, really nice, usable um, 2D line work for comics or animation. And there you go. Thanks for watching. I'm sorry I ramble. <laughs> uh, that's just kind of the way it's going to be, though. And I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching. You know, thumbs up, subscribe if you feel there's some, some value out of it. But take care. Bye.